Okay, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in this uh, challenging, in these challenging times. We're here with uh, Antonio Aguelas and Simon Dominguez, and I'll hand it over to, immediately, to Antonio. Good morning, buenos dias, buenas noches, buenas tardes, uh, and as they say every Saturday night, it is directly from Mexico City and California. <laughs> Well, it's a pleasure to be here with two very good friends of mine, and just one that I just met, um, Chris and uh, Stephen, who, as I always say, is he's the godfather of open water swimming, and Mr. President um, Simon, he's the president of the South End Rowing Club, and uh, it's a pleasure to see you, Simon. I see you have a, a background there um, of aquatic park, and... Um, I do, Antonio. It's 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 uh, my my swimming pool and your swimming pool. I know it's uh, you know, San Francisco Bay. I've just got out of the bay this morning. Had a beautiful swim this morning. Of course, we're all six feet apart, not getting too close. But there's certain things that you just sort of just can't give up. Uh, I know we're sort of meant to be at home, but you've got to keep your sanity. And at least the shelter in rules place, you know, means you can go out and do some exercise and get out there and do some things. And we made the most of it this morning by going out and floating around the bay and getting cold. Like, I'm still a bit cold now, but I feel fantastic. No no sauna today, no sauna. No, it was a car sauna on the way home. But yeah, okay. that's fine. No, we like the cold water. Yeah. I, know, I know how much you like the cold water. Definitely. I'm the same. But today is Friday. And um, let me just tell them a quick story how Simon and I met. Um, I sneaked to the Southern Rowing Club before I was a, a swimmer, uh, a member. And um, Simon and I was changing, we both were changing. He asked me, what's your name? And I said, I'm Antonio, I'm from Mexico. He said, well, you should come on, on next Friday at six o'clock in the morning, we'll have a swim. And um, so I went back to, to where I was staying. I was staying on those days in, in Palo Alto. And I told Lucia, I met this guy, he's from Australia. I can't understand him very well, but he said, you know, swimming on Friday at six o'clock. And so the day I go there and the night before I tell Lucia, I feel like a little kid that is going my first day in school. And she said, well, promise to be kind to everybody. Okay, it's like, you know, you don't want to have to give a bad impression. And it was amazing. You know, you, you did, uh, you know, we became very good friends from day one. And um, that, that, that group that you and Kim um, uh, um, lead, uh, that was amazing. And that's how I met Kim. And I met a lot of my friends, Cameron. Um, uh, well, I was, I, was I was impressed, Antonio, straight away because, you know, I met a lot of people and a lot of people say, yeah, we're going to come down and swim with you on a Friday morning. But you followed through. You know, you did it, which is great. Um, you were just lucky in some ways that wasn't your birthday when you came down because we have a little tradition on people's birthday, you have to swim in your birthday suit. And it's quite funny sometimes when there's 15 or 20 people all standing naked on the beach, you know, about to jump in the water and swim. So, you know, if it was your birthday, we would have had a birthday suit swim for you. Uh, but we know when your birthday is. Unfortunately, we've just missed your past birthday. Happy birthday again. But we'll do it again next year. Thank you very much. Simon, one of the, one of the, the things I would like to, to talk with you is how do you get, you know, being from Australia, um, having been a skier, how did you end up swimming in cold water? I know, you know, Aussies like Mexicans do not like cold water. Um, and uh, how was that pro progression from, from skiing and other sports into swimming? Yeah, no, that's an interesting question. So I, I, you know, I did a lot of sport when I was back in Australia. You know, I played rugby. I was a skier. I, I was actually a windsurfing instructor at one stage. But I was always a swimmer. Did a lot of uh, ocean swimming. Did a lot of um, surf club swimming. You know, I was a member of the North Bondi Surf Club. So wasn't really used to cold water. Did a lot of warm water swimming. And I remember you know, I joined a club in Sydney called the Bondi Icebergs. And everyone goes, wow, you're tough. You're a member of the icebergs. Yeah, the water must be really cold. And the water's not really cold. Well, I think the coldest it gets down to is about 60 degrees. And when it gets to 60 degrees, everyone freaks out. And, and I remember <laughs> one day swimming and the water got to 58, I think. And you know, I swam without goggles and I got out and I said to my friend, I think I have ice on my eyeballs. My eyes are so cold. I think they've iced over. So when I came to San Francisco and someone said, do you want to swim in the bay? I went, I'm not sure if that's a wise idea, but I'm not very smart. So I did it. And I thought, this is fantastic. This is really fun. And, and I sort of you know, fell into a bad crowd of good people who like to swim in open water. 
uh, you know, it wasn't long before I had contact with Steve and, you know, saw some of the things he was doing and thought, I, I really like this group of people that, that swim in cold water. Uh, I met someone who had swum the English Channel and she said, I said, I've always admired people that do these long swims. You know, the English Channel is, is a benchmark that I don't think I'll ever be able to, to reach, but I, I would love to do it. And she said, well, I've seen you swim. You're a better swimmer than me. There's no reason why you can't do it. And all of a sudden I had myself an English Channel book swim booked you know i had to become a little bit more serious about open water cold swimming and you know it, that was the start of it all so I, I sort of feel really lucky i fell into this sport i love it i'm still very he heavily involved in it and you know the south end rowing club just happened to come around at, at the perfect time for me one of the stories that i remember um when we first met is that um you know let, let's just keep a little background we, we won't keep all the details but the most important thing when you are we, we can't top. we can't talk about the tequila uh, no well that, that, that's that, that's a night to remember that's a night okay. to remember okay. no but what, one of the traditions at the southern rowing club is that um, after you finish swimming you go to the, the sauna and so the talk in the sauna um it's amazing because you know you don't it, it, that's why i love the southern rowing club there's no rules the only rule is having no rules and uh, so in the sauna you can drink you can drink tequila you can well tequila wasn't an, the, the first was whiskey and, and, and beer and then we yes. introduce tequila. But one thing that I love is that in the sauna, everybody tells stories. I mean, what their biggest swims and what they're doing. And I, I was amazed by your, your Farlon story. Can you, can you tell us a little bit more about, you know, it, why did you go to a, to a shark infested waters and what happened to that swim? Yeah, yeah. Well, first of all, the water's not shark infested, they're shark inhabited. So, you know, okay, I, I yeah, know, but, yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah. sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I, you know, I, I swam the English Channel. I swam the length of Lake Tahoe. I, you know, I'd started doing some longer swims. And, and my friend and your friend, uh, our friend, Kim Chambers, said, oh, I'm going to swim to the Farallons. And she said, Do you, uh, can you train with me for that? And I said, sure, I'll, I'll train with you. And then it got to a stage where I said, well, if I'm going to train with you, let's do it together. Let, let's do a duo swim from the Golden Gate Bridge to the Farallon Islands. And you know, that was all fine uh, until we worked out, determined that the English Channel rules mean that you can't have anyone in the water with you for the first three hours. So we decided, well, that means we're sort of breaking the rules. And, you know, you're right, South Enders, we don't really like following rules very much, but we do very strictly adhere to the open water swimming rules. So we said, well, we can't really swim together, but there's no reason why we can't swim separately. So really the, the reason, you know, I swam the Fairlands was it was a swim that hadn't been done before. You know, a few people had actually swum from the island into the, the mainland. And I thought, well, I'm from Australia. I'm meant to be a little bit different. Why not try and do it a different way that no one's done before? And that's why I decided that I'd attempt to try and swim from the Golden Gate Bridge to the Fairlawn Islands. A swim that I almost made. Wow. Got and close. That, yes. In we also, you were also crew with Kim when she did the foreign, weren't you? Yeah, yeah. So, so you now my attempt to swim out was uh, in mid July, and two weeks later, Kim was meant to swim out as well. But she's a little bit smarter than me. You know, she decided that it was probably getting a little bit too sharky. Yeah, you know, the reason my swim was it was called off at the end was because I was circled by a great white shark that started to show a little bit too much interest in me. I didn't realize at the time, but I had bad chafing on my neck and I was bleeding into the water and that's what attracted the shark. So Kim thought, well, it's probably safer and smarter to be swimming from the island to the, the mainland rather than the other way. So two weeks later, I crewed for Kim on that swim. Um, she got through, she finished it you know, to become, you know, she's the first and only woman to have ever done that swim. And that was an amazing achievement. That was really fun to be part of that effort. In that swim, what was the most, the crucial moment? Because we all have crucial moments in our swims. I mean, that's always yeah. the yeah. turning well, point. For, for, for Kim, I think the crucial moment was, I think it was about the six or seven hour mark when she started uh, being sick. So the, the feed that she had wasn't really agreeing with her. And she started, you know, every feed after that, she started vomiting and, and was not well. And, yeah, you know, at that stage, the swim could quite easily have been off, been called off because she just wasn't well. But, you know, she's not the sort of person that will give up, for, you know, because of things like that. You know, she's, she's had a lot worse in her swims and she put her head down and she was just able to, to keep going and finish the swim. Like it was quite an amazing effort. And it was, you know, as I said, it was really 
great to be part of, to be there and see it happen in person. Wow. Um, well, you know, you, before, before we started talking, um, you had some pictures. Um, our audience, you know, the ones who were lucky to go and, and to, to be able to go to California and go and swim at aquatic park. Um, it's, uh, you know, we love it and we know it. Um, can you just can you tell us a little bit about the South End Rowing Club and, um, and Aquatic Park and what do we do there when we are there? Because um, yeah, yeah, you are the yeah, president well, the, the, of the club. I, I am, I am, and you know, you know, I sort of wonder sometimes, do I want to be a member of a club that will have me as president? But <laughs> I do, I do. And, uh, you know, I was lucky enough when I joined the club that they asked me if I wanted to be the swim commissioner, which is sort of like the captain of swimming, and I, I took on that position. And then the president said, "Look, I'm retiring at the end of this year. Would you consider being president?" And I said, "Well, I consider it, but you know, I'm, I'm not really in a position where I can do it right now." And then, boom, I was president. And am I actually doing my it's a two year term? I'm in my second two year term right now. And the South End Rowing Club is a really special community. It's it's you know it's a bit like our our open water swimming community. Everyone looks after everyone else. So the South End Rowing Club, we're we're a swimming, handball, rowing, and running club. So four different sports. Swimming is definitely the sport that has the most most participation. But you know it's it's a pretty eclectic bunch of people at the south end you know that you know we have lawyers and doctors and nurses and bus drivers and firemen and garbage collectors you know, we have all walks of life and it's quite funny you mentioned about being in the sauna when someone's sitting in the sauna with no clothes on it doesn't really matter what you do you know that what really matters is the sort of person you are and you know i've met so many really cool people through this place and you know when i was doing my marathon swims the support I got from people at the club, you know, if, you, if you're going out to do, say, an eight-hour training swim, if you're going to go uh, around the bay, you need Zodiac support. And, you know, you, you know there's probably a, a list of about five or ten people I can go to the south end and say, can you support me on a, on a training swim like this? And they will do it. They don't ask it paid. You know, there's nothing they ask in return. They, they do it because they, they just think it's, it's the best thing to do for our community. And, you know, you don't find many places like that anywhere in the world anymore. So I, I feel yeah. really lucky that I found this place and, and I feel really happy that you've joined Antonio and Steve, we need to see you down there a bit more often too. Yeah. Can you show us some of the pictures that you have uh, that you were showing us just to, before I, before I make another comment, well, when you, sure. show, the, when you show the pictures, let, let me tell you, um, the audience, um, you, Stephen, <laughs> is that, uh, that uh, um, when, when uh, Simon was the, 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 the 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 person in charge of of swimming the commissioner that was on my way to finishing ocean seven so we go out to dinner um with a, a couple of friends and um i guess it was cameron um uh kim you myself maybe miguel and i said that uh, um that's miguel. yeah that's miguel miguel is our, but miguel is a it's a fixture in the, the southern rowing club because as, as simon was saying uh, uh, miguel will always row for you he will always would kayak for you and he not, doesn't never ask for anything so i tell simon simon if i finish ocean seven can we have a party he said what kind of party antonio well i said it has to be a very special party and um a, a little bit less similar like the one we had in uh, in uh, at the olympic club steven that's that's where the idea came from from the southern Brown club so well i want three things i want mariachis Herradura Blanco and Corona beer. So that's 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 what we're gonna have. And, <laughs> and it was amazing. And, and you know, I've been, obviously been to a lot of functions at the South End Rowing Club. It was number one. It was the best best night I've had at the club. Yeah, you know, we, we had this mariachi band, a traditional Mexican mariachi band, which was so amazing. And everyone was so excited about Antonio getting his Ocean Seven. Like you know, we, you know, we have some some world class marathon swimmers at the South End. Antonio, Kim Chambers. Yeah, we've got Steve Walker, we've got Amy, uh, we've got we've got so many people that do so many amazing swims, and it's it's sort of feels so normal that you know if someone says I'm just going out to do an eight hour swim and the water's 53 degrees, no one goes wow, everyone goes okay, like it's just it's almost become normal the things we do which we know, um, the things we do are very abnormal, they're not normal, but it's just it's a, the sort of the community breeds that sort of spirit and adventure. One of the things that, that I always tell people that, that you know we are very proud of the South End Rowing Club is that we have three 
out of uh, how, how many um, Ocean Sevens are there in the world right now, Stephen? Oh, I think 21 or 22. Okay. Yeah. But at the time when we only had, uh, you know, uh, 12 or something. 12, you 12, know, the yeah. three, three, of, three of us were from the, 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 South, the South End Rowing Club. Kim, who was six, um, I'm seventh, and then Cameron is what? 12, uh, I think Cameron is yeah, 12, somewhere no? Somewhere like that, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, so, uh, we're, we're, we're very proud of the three of you, and we are, we're, we're super psyched that you are South End members and not Dolphin Club members. Yeah, uh, you, know, <laughs> you know, after you, that's, you know, after you, as a, a Dolphin is coming into the interview after you. So we say, well, first we go Cirque and then we go Dolphin. So that's you know. okay. We, we love the Dolphin Club, but um, we love the South End more. Yes. So, you know, for, for those that don't know, the Dolphin Club is a club that sits right next to the South End Rowing Club at Aquatic Park in San Francisco. It also is a rowing, swimming, handball and running club. We have an annual competition every year at Tri, which is swimming, uh, running and rowing against the club. And the South End Rowing Club holds the trophy right now, the plaque. You know, we won last year. We won more than them mostly, but you know, they've had a couple of good years recently. But I don't know why someone would join the, the Dolphin Club when the South End Rowing Club is right next door. Definitely. And I... I, 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 I... I, I try both clubs because, you know, one thing that, that happens with the Dolphin and the, and the Southern Rowing Club is that everybody can go in. You know, if you pay, you pay, there's no, no risk. That's right. That's right. The club is open to the public. So anyone from the public can come in. You know, if want, people want to come in and have a swim or have a run or whatever, you know, I think it's a $10 drop-in fee and you can use a shower or the sauna um, and you can just get, some, get to meet some really cool people too. And actually, I've met a few people during the lockdown now because, you know, the club is closed. We're all swimming from the bleachers in Aquatic Park. I've met a few people who will become South End members once, once we open the club again. Yes, really definitely not Dolphin. But <laughs> let, let, me, let me ask you, you know, I was, I was talking to, to um, Diana, Diana Walsh, the president of the Dolphin Club. Uh, um, Diana Walton. Diana Walton. Um, uh, because I didn't, I read, I probably you read, did you read the article of... Uh, um, Bonnie Tsui in the New York no, Times. No. Oh, oh wow. yeah, I did. I did. I did read that, Antonio. Yeah. Her book just came out, and uh, um, Mauricio Prieto told me that they had a virtual presentation at the Dolphin Club. Um, uh, so I was going to ask you, do you think we can organize a uh, virtual presentation of my book uh, in the next couple of weeks? We definitely can, and I would, I would love to do that. I think that would be a fantastic thing to do. Okay, well, you know, you, you, you heard Stephen. We have now a, a, our first book presentation. Stephen yes. wrote the Stephen wrote the review in the back of the of the book of the book. Did you like the book, Stephen? I, I loved it. So. I have the book on my Kindle. It's it's the next book I'm going to about, about to read. Yes, right. definitely. So, Simon, what are what are the plans for for you as a swimmer? I, I we saw you running the other day. You run you run your first marathon. I did, I did. So I, unfortunately, not long after I finished my furlong swim, which is four years ago now, you know, time's flying, um, I got injured. And I, I have these, inj these, I get these cramping issues that I haven't been able to resolve. And I've seen lots of doctors about it and sports medicine people. And, and I started getting a little bit upset and depressed about it. And I thought, well, why don't I try another sport? And it was hard because I was about a 240, 250 pound swimmer. So yeah, I, I had a bit of weight on. And I thought, well, I might try running. And just like with my marathon swimming career, you know, a lot of people had advice for me. You can't swim. You're too old. You're too fat. You're a skier. Your knees are bad. All this sort of reason. And, you know, to most of those people, I'd say, you're probably right. Maybe I can't do it, but I'm going to give it a go anyway. So uh, three weeks ago, I did my first marathon, you know, 26.4 miles. It's a bloody long way. Like a long way. But it was fun. So, you know, I don't know if I proved them wrong, you know, maybe I still can't become much of a runner, but I'm enjoying running right now. I'm doing a lot of bike riding. Uh, and, you know, as soon as this uh, shelter in place finishes, I hope to get back into doing a lot more swimming as well. So how, what was worse for you? Doing uh, the, the, the English Channel or running the marathon? I think swimming's harder. I find swimming harder. Like, you know, the English Channel took me 13 hours. The marathon took me five hours. Um, yeah, you know, I, I find the long distance swims uh, more taxing on the body. Uh, after my furlong swim, I was in the water for almost 19 hours. It took me three weeks to recover from that swim. It took me two days to recover from the marathon. So I think 
if I start doing ultra marathon runs, I think that's probably a good way to compare against, you know, ultra marathon swims. But <laughs> right now, I, I think what you do, Antonio, is a lot harder than what I'm doing right now. <laughs> well, de def you're definitely going into running. I mean, to think about an ultra marathon, that's a, uh, well, you, how, many, how many pounds have you lost? Because you look very skinny. Uh, I'm about 207 pounds now, so I've, I've lost about 30 pounds. Wow. Um, but, you know, you know, when you're very overweight and, and, you know, to do our sport, you know, to, to be a cold water swimmer, you've got to be a little bit overweight. I probably took it a little bit further than I needed to. <laughs> we all um, took it further. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's funny. I, I get cold in the water now and I've never got cold before, but I love being cold. So, you know, the, the weight loss is, is getting me that, that cold water buzz a lot quicker than I normally had it when I was a fair bit heavier. Yeah. That's good. And any plan, any new things, you know, the, the last time I was at the club, it was, it looked very shiny, very clean, a lot of remodeling. Um, yeah, we've done, we've done a lot of work. We're, you know, we're continually working on the club where we're refining the way we run the club. Um, yeah, we've got some exciting things coming up. Um, I hope we can see you at the club more for in 2020. Yes. Well, ho hopefully as soon as I can travel again, um, I, one of the first thing I'll, I'll have to do is go, that'll be a reason for a party. There you go. <laughs> we have to we have to celebrate the the, the, the end of the lockdown. We, we could, we well, could, Steve, that's a good use. Steve, you better come up for it as well. Uh, yeah, I, I'd love to. I, I wanted to ask you about your Farallon swim. Now, yes. people talk about sharks. They talk about cold water. They talk about jellyfish. Um, but you are literally one of the handful of people that have been pulled out of the water because of a shark. Um, you know, to the best of my knowledge, Greta Anderson in the 50s when she was swimming Molokai, she was pulled out. Um, Rainy Pierce, have, Rainy yes, Pierce as well. This yeah. was at two or three years ago, same, That's right. almost the same location, in fact. Yes. People don't talk about, like, what is the, there's sort of a level of disappointment for any DNF, any did not finish, yep. but yours is, is very, it's a very small number of people. Can you explain, you know, when people said you have to get out? Yeah. Um, yeah. No, and that whole mindset. Yeah. So it's, it's interesting you say that Steve, because um, I ran into Bill Bradley the other day who has attempted the English channel a bunch of times. And he asked me the same question. He said, I believe that you're, you know, he said, are you still really freaked out from almost being eaten by a great white shark? And I went, I was never freaked out by that. He said, oh, I, I thought you got all depressed and worried about it. And I went, I don't. And I didn't. And for some strange reason, you know, the sharks have never worried me. Like, I, you know, I, I don't think I would have attempted the swim if I was really concerned about sharks. But it's interesting. I, I, I was lucky enough to get a, uh, a tour of the Fairlawn Islands. You know, it's a sanctuary. You know, the public's not allowed on it. But I went out with Vito Biala one day to drop some supplies off. And one of the scientists who lives on the island said to me, he said, I heard that you're not scared of sharks. And I said, I'm not. Like, I, I just don't concern me that much. And he said, have you ever seen one up close eating a seal, ripping it apart? And I went, no. And he said, go and have a look at that and come back and tell me you're not scared of sharks. And I went, oh. So I, I don't tell people I'm not scared of sharks anymore because I might be. But, you know, in some ways, ignorance is bliss. You know, I haven't had a, a, a close, you know, the encounter I had with the shark, I didn't actually see the shark myself. Um, you know, I, I actually banned my family from watching Shark Week on TV, which was on two weeks before my friend on swim. But I, I really do believe that, you know, if you show, you know, sort of high level, if you, if you do show respect for, for the environment and the animals out there, they will show respect for you. And the only reason I had the shark encounter was because, after you know almost 19 hours of swimming, you know my beard grew and I started chafing, and and I started bleeding into the water. So you know when you're in the the biggest shark, great white shark breeding ground in the world, and you're bleeding, um, you know there's a good chance you're going to have an encounter. And and I think if I you know, if that hadn't happened, I don't think I would have seen a shark. And uh, I was very lucky that my my wife and daughter on the boat because they spotted the shark. They they spotted the fin. Everyone said no, it's it's just you know, they're birds, it's not really thin, and, and it was a shark. I was also very lucky that it didn't happen at night time because we wouldn't have seen it then. But, you know, I, I've sort of thought about it a lot since then, and I'm definitely, I definitely would not get in the water if there were bull sharks. You know, they're, they're sharks that do scare me a lot. But great whites, you know, I, I would do this again. 
um, you know, I, I would probably, you know, once I started getting a bit chafing, I'd probably stop and put some, some, uh, some more lube on my neck to stop me chafing. And, and, you know, it was pointed out about five or six hours before the finish of the swim that I was starting to get quite red on my neck and it, it was hurting, but I thought, I'm so cold. You know, the water was 52 or 53 degrees. I, I, I can't stop for a minute to, you know, to reapply lotion to my neck. How far were you from the, your, your finish? That uh, so it's a 20, 28 and a half mile swim. I was at about the 25 mile mark. Oh, so I could, see, I could see the island very clearly. Uh, you know, it, it was very depressing to stop. Yeah. And I got out of, the, out of the water and I said to Vito, who was my captain, I said, look, I know I said at the beginning of the swim that you're in charge and whatever you say goes, but I'm overruling that now. I'm going to get back in. You know, my, my view was that you know, I want to get back in in under 10 minutes, uh, you know, finish the swim, and you know, have it counted as a proper swim. Uh, but when Vito said, you can't get back in because you're bleeding, I didn't realize at that time. And as soon as he said that, I said, I understand, I'm not getting back in. But, you know, of course I was, I was devastated, but I also quite liked being alive. And I knew getting back in when I was bleeding, <laughs> the shark was still there. The shark came back under the boat when they were hosing me off when I got out of the water. Uh, getting back in the water would have been a very silly thing to do. Wow. wow. Now. Uh, take us through. So you're swimming. You you don't know you're bleeding. Your your uh, <laughs> wife and your daughter have seen the shark. Vito's on the boat. Did he calmly tell you? Did he wait for a feeding stop? No, but what that's was a, that mechanic? That's, 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 that was a funny situation, Steve, because uh, it was actually my 16 year old daughter at the time who spotted the shark, and she called out. And my wife had been sick all night crewing. You know, she she was asleep downstairs. She came running upstairs. And the crew had been yelling at me for a while, but I was, I was a bit waterlogged. I was a fair way from the boat. I couldn't really hear them. But as soon as my wife yelled out, Simon, shark, you've got to come to the boat. Of course, I swam straight over to the boat straight away. Oh, so, wow. you know, I got to the boat and she said, you have to get out of the water. There's a shark. And I said, where? I'd like to see it. And she goes, no, you don't understand. There's a shark there right now. And she reached in and pulled me out of the water with one arm. And you know, as I said, I was about 250 pounds then. She's done a little bit of permanent damage to her elbow, but she saved my life. Wow. Wow. Well, thank you very much for sharing that. The untold story of a shark encounter. Yeah. And, and you know, I had a documentary crew on the boat who, who made a film about it called okay. From the Golden Gate to the Farallons, which is on Vimeo. Okay. Um, unfortunately, they didn't get any footage of the shark. No problem. We believe but, you. Yeah. <laughs> we but, believe your wife. But, but it means that, uh, that every time I tell the story, the shark can get bigger and bigger and bigger. <laughs> <laughs> it was a mega shark. It was so big. Yeah. Was so, so, that, so that film is on Vimeo. Vimeo. It's on People Vimeo, watch yeah. it. And it's right. called, called again? From the Golden Gate to the Farallons. Okay. Thank you. It was great. Yeah, made, made by some, some young filmmakers from Marin County. Yeah, it was, it was a great experience having that documented. Thank you. Well, ahead, it, was, it was great having you, Simon. Um, you know, Mauricio ha just joined us. You know, he missed the good part about the Southern Rowing Club. <laughs> how we're different from the Dolphin Club, and you know that we're really, we're really, we're really a, a, a club. Um, it's, it's like your school, my school. Well, Mauricio and I are both members of Night Train Swimmers, so we swim together already. And uh, I know Mauricio would have joined the Southern Rowing Club if he knew better at the time. So. <laughs> No, no problems. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I have, have a lot of very good friends at the Dolphin Club. I, I love both clubs. I just happen to be a South Ender. And uh, Mauricio, uh, before you joined us, uh, we we agree with uh, with uh, with um, with Simon to have a a um, a book a uh, virtual book presentation, and uh, you know, we could do it with bo both clubs. Um, yes, and, uh, and that that'll be a a great opportunity. And uh, Stephen will be there with us and. I'll see if Bonnie wants to 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 join us for the for the book presentation, but I, I'll work on that. And it was great having you. I yeah. know you have to go to your Friday I do. I do. Your Friday meeting, and uh, hopefully we'll have you again. And um, and uh, for our viewers, we'll tell them um, the exact date of our celebration at the Southern Rowing Club, so they can come and join Please us. Please come and join us. Okay. Thank you, Antonio. Thank Bye -bye. you. Thank you. See you, Mike. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye. Hola, Mauricio. Hola. Well, I'm, I'm happy that the, that the Dolphin Club South End uh, virtual book presentation 
uh, will happen because I think I think it would be a great a great format for you to present your book. Well, that was your idea, so uh, you know, thank you for that. And uh, uh, you know, we'll put it together in the next couple of in the next couple of weeks. But uh, well, have, it's great having you. Where, you know, where where are you? You you are locked out. You're locked in the lock. You know, you look um, very. You look very um, locked. I'm I'm very very much locked, but uh, but I also am for. I can I can for whenever I want. I'm very not keep anybody. I wanted you. Steve and I wanted you to be in our program um, to talk about two things, which I think will be interesting for our, for our viewers and people who are listening to us. Um, the first one is how did you become interested in open water swimming? Because uh, um, you know that's how you and I met. Uh, Mauricio, you know, got a, a, an email one day, Stephen. From, from this guy, Mauricio Prieto. And he tells me that he wants to get some advice about doing Gibraltar. And he goes on and on, and, uh, but he never tells me the truth. You know, he, never told, he never tells me that the number one thing he, he should have told me. He never told me that he was a cow, um, that he had gone to cow. <laughs> So, so I, ha I have like, like after three weeks that I'm you know, telling him things, this and that, I said, well, there's one thing I need to tell you. I went to Cal. I said, well, you know, that's your problem. You went to a, a community college. So I, I won't take that again. <laughs> uh, just, just for the, the people who aren't aware of the uh, intense rivalry between uh, Antonio's alma mater of Stanford University and Mauricio's at uh, University of California, Berkeley, this is an intense rivalry, but it, it's very friendly and very respectful. So go, go ahead. I, I didn't know about the Cal connection. <laughs> Go ahead, Mauricio. So tell us, how do you get involved? Did you get involved in open water swimming? Um, wait, I, I was going to do something that I think should be interesting for you. Speaking of, do, do you see anything? One second. Do you see anything in the background? Yes. Congratulations. Okay. <laughs> All right. That's, that was That's a lucky moment. That is, that, that, that is just uh, special for Antonio because... Anyway, uh, so now, now am I back to no, normal? No, not yet. Yep. Not yet. We still see the uh, okay. University of California, Berkeley, uh, celebrating their national championship. Oh, that's stop share. Okay, got it. Um, so I, I got I got into open water swimming um, pretty much as a result of moving from. From the Bay Area, I was living. I was living in the Bay Area from from 1993 to 1999. And in 1999, I moved. I moved to Barcelona, and um, and and I was working very near the water. And I joined a swim club called Club Natación Barcelona, which is right in front of the of the ocean. It's, it's right on the beachfront. So uh, that's when I started swimming, and, and, and my job, my work, the offices were very close to the Club Natación Barcelona. So um, I was, it, it made it extremely easy to swim in the ocean on a, on a regular basis. Um, you know, I was going, my my lunch break, I was swimming in the ocean. So, so that's that's how I got in into uh, open water swimming. So this okay. was in, in, in 90, you know, from 1999 onwards. Great. Had, you, had you done swimming before that point? I, I had done swimming, but com I mean, uh, I mean, all, all my swimming life have, have been completely recreational and, and amateur. So I, I had done swimming, uh, but never on a competitive basis. Um, the, the only, I, my wife is a, was a swimmer like a, a real a real swimmer as opposed to me i mean she was she was um she was a captain of the princeton swim team uh she's the president of princeton swimming uh alumni so so she was a real swimmer and actually i got her to start swimming again uh in swimming open water because as many competitive pool swimmers the the last day of of college swimming is the last day that they want to touch the water um, so, so I, I convinced her to uh, get back into swimming. Actually, when 
when we were when I was planning on swimming Gibraltar, that's when I I, I told her that it would be great if she, if she joined the this project. And um, and but actually, I, I I actually wanted to first thank you for having me in this show, which I should have started with that. And when when uh, Antonio asked me to be here, I I was like, you know, I, I was kind of uh, I wanted to I put that conversation in into perspective because you know here was one of the most notable and accomplished open water swimmers in the world, Antonio. Um, and one of the sport's most influential media platforms and personalities, which is Steven and, uh, and, and Walsa, interviewing a simple open water amateur in, 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 like me. So, so this, is, this for me was like being invited by ESPN and Tom Brady to broadcast a Monday night football game. So, uh, so you know, clearly this dynamic will only happen in, in, in very few sports. One of them is open water swimming. And that, that, that really is one of the reasons why I love this sport because it, it gets, it, it, it really unites people that are extremely accomplished in this sport and have done superhuman feats with people that are just passionate about the sport and, and, and love to practice it. So thank you. Yeah. You're very welcome, Mauricio. Bienvenido. You know, so one of one of the one of the the, the ideas of this um, this uh, um, show when that what, as usual Stephen thought about it is we want our viewers and our readers you know not right you know the 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 the, the, the daily news of open water swimming has uh, you know a, a lot of circulation and, and we tell stories about swimming uh, and swimmers and, and and one thing that the people should know is that love that you had for open water swimming translated into some into something really big called Marnaton. And uh, I have to say that from the day I met you and uh, and the things that have happened in uh, the Barcelona area and in and, and, and that area of uh, uh, of the world, um, you know, it, it's just amazing. I mean, for example, Miguel Sunier, who's a very good friend of ours as well, um, he has these tours that you can go, no, it's, too, you know, mm -hmm. but that's something that happened and, and this is, how the sport is growing and, and open water swimming is growing. Can you tell us a little bit about what's happening in the region and a little bit about Marathon? Yeah, I mean, Marathon, it, it, it was a project that was um, created uh, by Miguel Raola and Mirenchu, um, both, both from Barcelona and both created the whole concept of Marnaton, which is Marnaton, the word itself is a combination of mar, which in Spanish, it's, it's ocean or sea, uh, natacion, swimming, and, and the marathon, you know, long distance swimming. So, it's, so, so they thought about combining those three aspects, of open water, long distance swimming, and, and, and creating um, a movement around, around those concepts. And, um, and started in the in Cadaqués, which is in the Costa Brava uh, in Spain, in Catalonia, very near France. Um, I so this was in 2000 and, in 2008, and I started back in 2008. I was already swimming very regularly, and um, and the the company that I that I co-founded with with a few other colleagues is called eDreams. And eDreams is an online travel agency operating in mostly in Europe. And, uh, and in 2008, Mirenchu and Miguel came to me through, through a common friend and, and shared the, the project of, of, Mara, of Marathon. And I absolutely loved the whole project because the, the philosophy was to, to make open water swimming a popular sport. Um, in, in particularly in a region where absolutely has the ocean nearby and, and where swimming in the ocean can be done year round. The temperatures are very pleasant. The, the, the ocean, the Mediterranean is, is extremely uh, a, a nice body of water to swim. So, so they, they really had an idea that there should not be any, any reason why open water swimming should not be as popular as jogging or going out for a run. Things, things like that. So, so um, from my role in Needreams, I, I decided to 
to become this main, the, the main sponsor of Marnaton. So my initial um, kind of role with, Mar with Marnaton was as a sponsor and also participating in, in their different events. And, uh, and when I left eDreams in 2015, I changed my, my hats and, 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 and went from being a sponsor to being uh, one of the partners of, of, Mar of Marnaton. And, and, and the numbers, I mean, again, since 2008, um, we, have, we have races from ranging from two kilometers to 12 kilometers and beautiful surroundings in, in Caraque, San Feliu, uh, in the in in the Balearic Islands as well, um, we've had 50 events for the last 12 years, 26,000 finishers, um, and and we have the participation again. The the concept of we have Olympic swimmers, world champions like Esther Nunez and Damian Blaum competing alongside with with amateurs and people who just love love the water. And, and we have seen when you go to Barcelona in in Catalonia and in Spain now, I mean, open water swimming is a very popular sport. You go there in the summer, there's a lot of people swimming, swimming, and a lot of the reason why this has um, taken this course is, is I think, because of uh, what Marathon has has done. Do you have some pictures of Marathon? I have. Let me see. What, what you putting? What you putting? Let me tell the story. You know, um, you know when when. Uh, um, Mauricio and, and the, his, uh, everybody was training. They were training at uh, the Club de Football Barcelona. And uh, the one thing that you didn't mention is that you know you were a member of the the, the, the Barcelona. Um, that's where you swam, no? And then yeah, uh, yeah. The, uh, Susan and uh, uh, what's her Susan's name? Um, the other swimmer. Yeah. So Susan and 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 um, Emily. And Susan and Emily. We're doing 100, 100, and I guess they were going on 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 125 or one. Yeah, I think something like that, really fast. Because Susan is, with all due respect to Mauricio, she's a much better swimmer than Mauricio. She's probably a very good, a world class swimmer. I mean, she swims, you know, especially a butterflyer. So well, Mauricio, you know, it, the, the 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 comment in the club is, God, I mean, there's two crazy women just going around the pool. And Nadal was there at the time. Now, why don't you tell the story? What did Nadal say? Oh yes, I mean, um, and that, that that was that was when. Do, do you see my screen or not? Yes. Okay. So um, that was when because uh, alongside the the um, Gibraltar, which which by the way, um, again we 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 had the advantage of having um, Antonio as an uh, inspirational. Uh, not only as an inspirational advisor, but like a day-to-day, -day, you know, answering questions, dumb questions that we had. And, um, and alongside this project of, of crossing Gibraltar, the main motivation was to raise money for, for non, uh, an educational nonprofit, which is called um, Swim, for, Swim for Good. And this is also thanks to, to Stephen, which, which helped us a lot in, in, in the in getting to know this project to a wider audience, we were able to reach very, you know, notable sports personalities that were getting the word out about what we were trying to do, the money that we were trying to raise for, for this uh, educational nonprofit. And we got like people like Rafa Nadal, uh, you know, other athletes, sorry, here, um, athletes like, uh, Kerry Ann Payne, Olympic swimmer, um, Pep Guardiola, former you know Barca football team coach and now coach in I think in England I forgot what team. Uh, Pep Guardiola again. So 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 we were able to get on board many people that helped us uh, broadcast the, um, the our message about trying to raise money to to this nonprofit and. and main objective and we were able to raise about $125,000 for um, uh, for World Raider and um, as part of, of our Gibraltar swim so that's that you know it, it wouldn't have been possible just just because of us and that, that that's how we enrolled people like Antonio like Steve 
like in in, in many world class uh, sports personalities. So that that was a very nice project. And and indeed, I mean the again the real swimmers there. I was just like uh, you know a, 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 an amateur, and, and and both Susan and Emily were were real college um, swimmers. But uh, but again, I think that in in open water the distances or can can be uh, shortened a little bit. So. Uh, I also had the advantage that they had not been swimming for the last for the previous 20 years, while I had been swimming almost on a daily basis. So, so that allowed me to catch up a little bit with them. This, just to what said, I think this is something that a lot of people in our audience um, have the question: is how do I start? How do I go from not being a swimmer or not being a a a, a NCAA or an Olympic swimmer, AAU swimmer? How do you how was your transition? I mean, how did you start swimming fast, you know, longer and longer and adjusting to the water and getting the fear out of the way, the, getting the fears away from your head of all the things that people say about the oceans? I mean, how was that transition for you? Yeah, so, so for me, the, the beginning um, stage was swimming on a regular basis when I was doing my master's degree in in. University of California at Berkeley. So when I was at Berkeley, I was swimming almost on a daily basis at the pool. And that's how I, I fell in love with, the, with swimming as a sport. Um, and, and when I was in, in Barcelona, I continued swimming at Club de Natación Barcelona um, in the pool. But very, very soon I saw that the, the ocean was right there in front of me. So the days that there were that I was gonna have to share a lane in the pool, you know, those days I was like, okay, let, let me try going to the ocean and swimming. And then I and then I kind of was hitting myself. Why didn't I think about swimming in the ocean uh, before? And and I kind of never looked back because um, I mean I had already built up some endurance in the pool, so swimming longer distances in the pool, which which was great, but it I. I didn't not realize that it was boring until I got into the ocean and swimming. Um, so when I started swimming in the ocean, I realized that that uh, the it's it's a completely new new environment with so many additional variables that make swimming fun. And and one of those variables is just is just dealing with your head and thinking about you know trying to be. Um, I mean, I, I I don't have I don't have like my head doesn't take me to dark places in terms of dangerous animals or or things like that but um but it you know sometimes you you cannot see very well you touch things so in and you kind of become accustomed that of trying to train your mind of of helping you instead of uh blocking you but yeah it was it was it was a gradual um transition into the ocean and and but but once i Discovered ocean and open water swimming, and it was it was kind of a, a no a no brainer, definitely. Great. And what was what, what did you your, your the your, the most the swim they had the most fun doing? Um, you know, the, what one swim that I was that 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 was very um, very nice and very personal for me is is um, I, three years ago I. I swam, well, let, let me give you a little bit of context. When, when we moved from Barcelona to, to San Francisco or to Tiburon, where we are, um, it's right when we landed in, in, in the Bay Area, cancer. And, um, and so for the following year, she completely beat all odds and, and, and came back. So she, she survived. A, a, very very aggressive cancer and um and really that that was kind of a, a shock in in the family system and um so three years ago after she survived cancer our our youngest daughter her name is uh, carolina she she's a she's a pool swimmer. i mean she she she's a swimmer here in california and um and she decided to that she wanted as a challenge when she was 13 years old um, to swim from Alcatraz to San Francisco. And, um, 
so I, I, I joined her in that swim, and in that swim also she, she, she wanted to raise money for you know, uh, UCSF cancer research and, and for the doctor really that, that saved um, Susan. And uh, so she, she decided to do the swim. She, she kind of raised money for, for cancer research and in doing that swim, so I, I swim with, um, with her. Um, and, and so doing that swim is probably the, the most rewarding and, and the, the most personal one. Well, you know, that was, that, thank you for sharing that. I remember you telling me and, and uh, that she had to land somewhere. Uh, what did she land? Because she didn't land, did she land in aquatic park? She, no, the, the, uh, we were actually for, for about uh, 10 minutes, we were trying to swim into the cove, into, into aquatic park, but we were, we were swimming, we, you know, we were swimming without making any, any kind of distance because we, we had the, uh, um, the current against us at that time. So, so we landed right next to, right next to aquatic park and, and we touched land right next to aquatic park. But it was funny because like she, she is scared of, Sharks and of the unknown and things like that. And and uh, right before jumping in, she asked uh, David Holscher, who is um, who is also a night trained swimmer, and uh, and he was with his boat next to us. And and so Carlina asked David um, if there were any sharks. And 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 David Holscher told her, No, 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 don't worry about the sharks. The sharks are only, if there are sharks, they're only on the very bottom. So, <laughs> oh, no. uh, only on the very, very bottom of the ocean. So, so as, as we were getting near the coast, in her <laughs> mind, the very bottom, um, it, 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 it starts getting very close to her body. So, so when, we, when we reached the, the land, to touch the rock, because the rock was essentially the bottom of the ocean so that, so that was that was a funny kind of story um about her her fear of uh of sharks and and open water <laughs> probably one of the in my case one of the, the 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 things that i enjoy the most is when jimena my daughter um came back to me and said well that i want to start running now um and i want you to be my partner and I hadn't been running for for many many years and I said, well, okay, I'll do that. And I'll, but one thing, you, 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 you do the first kilometers, you do it by yourself. And I will join you at the half marathons. And, um, and then she decided to do Boston. And uh, I just couldn't say no. So suddenly I'm, I'm, I'm running half of the Boston, half of the Chicago marathon with her. And that was, that was painful. That was painful. Um, and but you know what, Mauricio? <laughs> I, when I did the, the, the Chicago Marathon, I, I, um, I, I remember Susan, because um, uh, when Susan was going through, through her sickness, um, no. I was deciding whether or not to do um, Ocean 7. So I put myself a goal, and I said, if I can run two marathons, and the second one under six minutes per kilometer, then I'll be ready to do Ocean 7. Because um, I don't think, um, as Simon thinks, I think for me, running a marathon, it's much, much difficult than running, than doing open water swimming. I mean, the pain of a marathon, uh, it's totally different from the pain of, of open water swimming, et cetera. Two different things mentally, uh, but the pain is, uh, it's different. So well, I don't and, know, and, and, last, a last question, Stephen. I think you're on mute. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, <laughs> You're bicultural, bilingual, and but Spain was was hit very hard by this uh, uh, COVID-19 virus, and obviously, same in the United States as around the world. But as we come out of this, um, do you see any differences between Spanish people going back into the water at Costa Brava and, and the Americans going back uh, and gathering the shoreline? Is it, are, are we? It's similar? Are there some cultural differences? What, what are the, what can you see going forward? Well, one, one stark difference is that Spaniards have not been able to leave their, their house. 
Um, and uh, so, so there has been a, uh, a they've, you know, it's impossible for them to swim for the last month or month and a half. So in terms of their, their, they might be going jumping or running faster towards the ocean once once they're let out of the house than than uh, people here in the United States, where we do have some possibilities of uh, continuing to to do um, so somewhat of a normal life by if if it's close to home, being able to to jump in the water or being able to go for a jog. So I think that there is a, a big difference in terms of the. The, the technical definition of uh, lockdown, but I but I think that both, you know, any open water swimming, um, uh, somebody, any, anybody passionate about open water swimming will will, I think that we we ha we do take things for granted, right? And and whether they are uh, seeing uh, people face to face, uh, going on vacation, uh, swimming, doing it, doing things that before could have been like like business as usual, I think that we, we will see that, we will not take for granted that, and, and we will rejoice a lot more of those moments. Um, so I, I, I do think that one of the positive things that will come out of this is, is really enjoying the, the, the things that we used to take for granted. And, and, and many times that is a simple, uh, you know, 30 minute swim, uh, or having a beer with a friend, some things, things like that. And, and clearly from, from a travel perspective, um, the, the first rebound will be local, like, you know, local tourism and, and, and people doing more things locally. So, um, so I do think that, you know, people that might've, might've not been, uh, swimming regularly. Now they're going to be forced to be, to, re to discover things that are within the reach. Oh, and wow. one of those things for, for, for people that are living near the coast, one of those, one of the clear things is, is going into the ocean and swimming on a regular basis, which is something that, that um, it's, it, it has been a very, very important part of my life for, for the last, I don't know how many years, 25 years. And, and hopefully for the future. And, and, and I think that this is something that uh, hopefully more people will, will discover. Thank you very much. Very, very profound observations. Thank you very Thank much, you. Mauricio. Thank you very much, uh, Stephen. And for our audience, next uh, Friday, we will have uh, um, two, our two guests. Uh, one will be um, Hugo Rodriguez. Um, Hugo, Hugo Rodriguez is uh, one of the few person in the world, and I don't think if he's the only one who has summit uh, Mount Everest. And in one of his uh, expeditions, he, um, pa he stayed at night uh, on top of, uh, um, of Mount Everest. Um, he will tell us his story, but he's also a swimmer. He, he's done two times the English Channel. So it's, uh, it's a rare combination to have uh, somebody who's done the two summits um, uh, of two different sports. And then we also have uh, Ibar Cisniega, Ivar uh, um, is a Mexican pentathlete, probably one of our, our best uh, athletes uh, if, uh, in our generation. He was a, the, 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 he was bearer of the flag in the, in the LA Olympics. Um, he, he, he went, as, as I did, Stanford, and um, he was a swimmer before he was a pentathlete. But he, today, he's the Secretary General of the Pan American uh, uh, Sports Organization. So we'll be able to talk uh, what's going on in the Olympic uh, um, community in terms of uh, the games and um, some interesting insights of uh, what's happening there. So next week we'll be at 8.30 and 9 o'clock Pacific Standard Time um, and hopefully we'll have the audience with us. Thank you very much, Mauricio and Antonio. Thank, thank you. All right. Take care. Bye. Bye. Bye.